Welcome back to Black Oak Couch Reviews. I'm your host, Christina. We are back for another recap and review of The Expanse Season 4, Episode 9, Saculum. Saculum? Yeah, that's the best you're going to get. It was directed by Breck Eisner and written by Daniel Abraham and Ty Frank, which I always love when they write the episodes. They are, of course, the creators of The Expanse, in case you do not know. So, I have no notes whatsoever. So, <laughs> so we're just going to jump from where everyone was at. I mean, it was pretty... Uh, I think, actually, the bulk of the episode... I think all of the episode, actually, took place on Illus. Yeah, and what was going on in uh, the atmosphere. So, Murtry gets his sight restored, and the first thing he's back to is killing Holden. <laughs> so, he sends word up to the Edward Israel to fire that shuttle that he had already rigged as a bomb at the Rasanante so that the Barbacola would lose the ore. Because if the Belters get the ore through the ring, then it makes their case for Illis much more legitimate. So Fayez is seeing that security is up to something and doesn't know why they're launching this fucking shuttle. So he gives Alex a heads up. And Alex is like, uh, you want to answer and tell me what the fuck is going on over there, Edward Israel? I love Alex being a badass in space. That's, uh, that's where he shines with his baby, the Rossi. And he's able to destroy the shuttle However, the debris hits where Naomi and Lucia are. And it also causes some other damage on the Rossi. And then you have Lucia being knocked off of the freaking ship and floating away on space. Now, I cannot imagine what was going through her head at this moment. If it was me, I would have died. (laughs) But, and you can hear Lucia is struggling and she's just freaking out. And Naomi doesn't even hesitate. She straps on a tether to the Rossi, jumps off after her, and she's just calmly telling her, hold on, hold on. Now, it's unusual, I guess, that Lucia was not more, you know... Belters go through this quite often. This is one of the more natural disasters that can happen to them because they are creatures of space. They work in space. They usually know that if you panic, if you fall off of, you know, whatever you were working on or mining, that you will actually use more oxygen. So it's better to remain calm. But I could also understand where Lucia's mind was at. Lucia, I would have been right there with her. But Naomi is just, man, she's a fucking hero, a fucking champion. And she grabs onto her and they have this awesome shot of showing her tethered, floating up and then holding Lucia's hand saying, you know, I got you. Of course, this creates a problem because they now aren't able to lift the Barbara Pacola due to the damage that the the Rossi has sustained. And it also weakens the cord or the makeshift cord that they had linking the two. So to move it back up in orbit... The railgun that is new and also was not in the books, I believe. I think at this point I can give major or minor book spoilers. Well, no, I'll say that for the spoiler section, just in case. (laughs) But he uses the railgun and he uses it as a makeshift thruster. Now, this is very, you know, tricky because it could tear the ship apart and put the Rossi in danger. However, it does work. And they are able to save the ore, 
even though even at this point lucy is like fuck it (laughs) like i'm done i'm not worried about it anymore i really just i mean she's uh been put on the edge of death a few times now and she's just like i just want to live i just want my family and i I don't care anymore (laughs) about this or and right as she gives up they are able to salvage the situation so yay belters now back on illis in the uh in the alien structure that they are in we get the real Yophesis Miller showing up and he breaks it down to holding what's been going on. Like basically, this is what I've been explaining all season is that Miller is in the investigator. They built the investigator based on Miller and so or using Miller's essence. Now it raises a very fundamental question of the proto molecule can interact with organic tissue or our organic tissue but it seems to retain the consciousness or is it a soul type of remnant of the person that's interesting because we really see the proto molecule as it destroys all life before it which it indeed does do but it also seems to retain some of the matter of the life in which it destroyed and so the only difference is is that it's now held hostage by the proto molecule or hijacked by it so that it can be repurposed for its own uses huh that's some interesting interesting uh thought process there which may or may not come in reference in the future and i really don't know i'm just speculating that even with my knowledge of the books there's some things that can lead into that whole debate of of what that possibly means but ultimately it's just something that crossed my mind as i was watching this and so Miller has been trying to fight his way through the polar molecule and I've been spied, spotting the real Miller all season. Like when he says it's going to be a float, a f- <laughs> what he said, a floater, a turd floater. And what does the rain taste like? Things that the proto molecule as a machine, when it sounds like robotic, where you know we got to get that we got to talk about that ride kid we got to talk about that ride versus him having a a human dialogue with holden as when he convinced him to move the root of course it was miller coming out saying hey you know this is gonna help me out he doesn't see what's gonna happen bad in this um and so he reveals that he has all the voices in his head from eros and maybe we can all get some find some peace and so he's working in in conjunction with the proto molecule because at this point in the storyline they are they have the same objective however when shit starts to go down you have that one moment where holden looks behind him remember when that that um that uh when they first discovered the terraforming thing whatever you want to call the drip power drill the proto molecule and you saw him look behind him and it almost felt like there was a presence that holden sense that's when he was sensing miller that was trying to come through and then of course last episode we saw that as well at the end him trying to push through and he explains that he did override his programming however and it's also interesting to know that you can overcome the proto molecules programming so what makes holden different for or miller different to be able to do that versus like well you also saw that julie was able to do it right because she was able to guide the proto molecule to earth that's whole reason why like she completely yeah overrid her programming that's interesting i never thought about that like that before so yeah i like this thought I wonder if that will ultimately lead to something because I always felt like I mean any book reader feels like Cibola Byrne was one of those books where you just like "Eh, it's a standalone tale and it just was not the 
favorite standalone tale just didn't but it was a heavy compacted dense bit about the e proto molecule and what came before it and all of the the setup for the technology in which we are now humans interacting with so it was incredibly dense at some parts so you could not blame one for maybe possibly or like the average reader who's maybe not as hardcore science um may have tuned out just a little bit or found rather dull but it does as i'm beginning to re-understand have its purpose and it probably is the most informative book of all of the series so he tells holden all about what has happened that the creatures that made the proto molecule is called the builders so we're finally getting some backstory on what exactly is this proto molecule tech we've always thought or at least what was always speculated was this this was uh that this technology was some first firing shot at earth from an alien species and yet we realized even in season three that this was just tech to build a road but why were they building said road and they only really found out they was building the road but you know at the last episode and he said that they did seem to the builders find a place on the planet that seemed to kill the proto molecule well the technology and that same thing or whatever uh weapon that was used by this alien race used the same tech to kill or bi- destroy the builders so humanity has basically stumbled in the middle of a alien war <laughs> with something that killed the technology that's even smarter than so there is a race i should say that's smarter than the actual builders that built the technology that we still are barely trying to figure out so there are concerns there of course with avasarala no one ever said she was wrong to be concerned (laughs) but at this point point once pandora's box is open unfortunately we all just know by you know human nature that you can't close it you just can't and fighting against it is a huge battle so he tells holden we got to get to the place where this magical bullet is so that we could possibly shut down the technology on this planet so that your ships can go back to normal and its defense and uh defense system will shut down because that's the reason why they are trapped there um why their ships are trapped in orbit so he reveals this portal in the floor and we know this from the books this is very um trans (laughs) um transfer from page where it's a elevator in sorts but it's kind of like an elevator made out of i don't even i can't (laughs) fully articulate what it is made of but it can transport him all over the structure to a different part of the planet it's their expressway what's funny about this is and even here in the book is holding so fucking tired from all of the days that he's had to spend awake taking care of everybody that he just falls asleep during this whole entire thing (laughs) he's been taking hella drugs to maintain keeping awake and alert so definitely the water could not have receded at a better time (laughs) so they find this glowing circle of energy however miller cannot see it but holden tells him it looks like i don't know it looks like saruman's eye from (laughs) lord of the rings but it's really trippy it's like blackish but like glowing 
on the outside of course for book readers this is like oh my god okay it's happening everybody stay calm what's the everybody procedure everyone calm. what's the procedure stay calm wait wait wait, wait. everybody you're and they come up with a plan where Miller is going to jump into one of the machines nearby and Holden is going to guide him to this eye of an angry god hoping that it will essentially kill both Miller slash the investigator so he actually is still living is what he considers himself to be also very interesting he even says sarcastically if you can call this living and he also will like i said before shut down the entire system's defense network then he can deactivate both himself and the planet using the 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 glowing circle thingy as well he also says that at this point in time or was it later on he might have told him like how basically the proto molecule has been talking to him all this time it is because there's a piece of proto molecule still left on the ship there's a nod left there i don't know if they made it clear but from what it's explained is that the before the the hybrid destroyed was destroyed on the rossi it planted that node there not to be found so the entire time the proto molecule has indeed been making a beeline for (laughs) holden to be their puppet for quite some time so while holden and miller are preparing to actually do something about the issue on the planet okoye witnesses holden talking to miller and she of course wants to follow and he's like bitch fuck off i ain't got no time to be having nobody with it. basically also he tells her that miller won't pop up and talk to me if someone else is around so she has no choice but to uh wait where he disappears on his train ride however mercury and way are looking for him and when they come upon uh <laughs> when they come upon okoye she cannot lie for shit and tells where they went then here comes amos like where the fuck did they go so it's kind of everyone's trying to catch up with holden Amos is trying to protect Holden and Okoye is like fuck it I'm going to <laughs> and there's a moment where Amos knows that Okoye needs to get the fuck away from here uh, actually he tells her to go after there's a Mexican standoff well not really Way stupidly thought that Amos was a meathead she read him so wrong she thought that he was a killer and that well see that's the thing mercury sent her out there that's how you knew he was willing to make uh or use her as bait because he knew for a fucking fact that if it came between holden and way uh Amos was going to choose Holden because he literally told Mercury to his face, don't you try that shit with my people. So the whole time he was telling Way, you know, Amos is going to be a problem. Amos is going to be a problem. And she's all like, no, no, he's not. He's not. And she's just like, look, we're about to get this payday. We can just, um, we can go off together. We can have something. They clearly do have something. I think it's easy to say, or write off because she's not the best of characters but that's part of amos's um charm is that he's not judgmental he doesn't really i mean as long as you're not evil and at this point she hasn't come off as evil um she's following orders technically she's just the the soldier and everyone else is the command and there is a hierarchy there in which you respect the command rather she should or not and that's what he has been trying to tell her like you need to separate yourself from your boss 
because your boss is gonna get you fucking killed and so she points a gun at him and says you know let's just uh get this profitability on this claim that we have towards the the planet we can make a lot of money all you got to do is get the fuck out of the way and um when it came down to it (laughs) she realized it's like i made a mistake amos straight up shoots her ass and of course this gives Murtry the chance to shoot at fucking amos and not only is he shot in what the shoulder but he also shoots his two fucking fingers off okoye doesn't want to leave him but uh she tells him to go after holden and so she catches up with holden uh holden here's what's happening he wants to go help his family and so he leaves her to (laughs) deal with miller and help him out so (laughs) she's like all he's like all you got to do is leave the technology to this glowing thing i'll be right back (laughs) so she watches as miller emerges with the little what, what what the hell was this it was like a spider like mechanical thing i imagine the machine in the book to be much much bigger um and he she awkwardly explains that you know holden had to leave so miller's like okay well fuck it you don't help me now (laughs) just grab my arm and lead me to this thing (laughs) but right as she's leading it to them the proto milliker the proto (laughs) milliker The proto molecule jumps, gets their technology, and comes out like a fucking, I don't know, a scorpion and beats the living shit out of <laughs> the little Miller bot. <laughs> and Nicole is watching this, like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> oh. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> and then there is like a whole thing a swarm of like bug like things that start to escape and it's creepy as hell and fall to the ground and they all die though once they come in contact with the um with the sarum and i <laughs> so He manages to get himself back up and is maneuvered over, even though he's, he's fucked up physically very badly over to the glowing thing. And something does happen, but we'll get back to that, uh, in a moment. So prior to this, we have the Holden and Mercury second showdown standoff. This time atop a large ass, very, um, I, uh, damn, that, I don't like those bridges that are that small. But he's standing there and Mercury's standing there like, I know <laughs> this motherfucker about to fuck me up. <laughs> giving his spills like he always does because he thinks for some reason if he can bullshit his way through this that there would be no problems and he says look holding you're the guy that comes after the post office is are built i'm the guy that 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 basically tames the tames the frontier i'm here when it's wilding out i'm here doing what must be done for civilization to show the fuck up and when they shoot at each other mercury goes down holding gets hit it seems like he get hit but maybe it's just a graze but it definitely was a good old-fashioned um cowboy standoff (laughs) 
Mercury loses his gun and it's over. And this is the second fight between the two in which I was unfulfilled in <laughs> the level of violence enacted on Mercury. And I guess that's the show how fucking good of a good old boy Holden is and why he is putting because he spares his life instead of killing him saying you know what civilization uh you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna put you on fucking trial because that's what civilization does <laughs> you dick so then he goes back to check on okoye and he witnesses just as they fall through the the eye of saruman her and um her and miller miller bot he does miller that is have some last words with holden because he says well this might be the last time i talk to you when he's preparing to jump into one of the bots and the last words that holden says to him is it tastes like nothing the rain that's what it tastes like (laughs) and those are some pretty depressing ass words to say to someone but you know they've had quite some time together over the last year almost so i can i can understand why the last moments can sometimes feel very um anticlimactic i think they did that with um you know whose character they did that with kodazar when he was dying and he said you know i thought i'd have some big words for this but oh well (laughs) and just dies because i think that's uh i think that's something to be said about that that there's there's no dramatic type of deal when someone dies sometimes they just die sometimes when it's over it's over and that's the end of our episode so we finally get the drama on the planet um i'm trying to figure out if we got the whole idea of what was happening um because it turns out i don't know if they said in this episode or the next one i can't remember so i'm gonna save it until the next episode so let's see if we got some feedback i do believe we do yep let's get into it so mimi says fuck my life i knew that bitch was gonna get my man hurt (laughs) she's got a whole bunch of cursing emojis i can't even think straight right now because all i can think about is my baby amos i'm so mad he got shot he always getting shot they shot off his (laughs) they shot off some of his damn fingers look at mercury being the epitome of white man even in a time when most of the powerful people i've seen are people of color claiming new terra as his planet fucking colonizer right i wanted amos to beat his ass so bad holding wounding him holding wounding him wasn't enough he deserves something much worse he's a terrible human being and chandra totally drank his damn kool-aid shaking my head yep oh yeah and then he went back to holding and he's like um he's like how are you and he's like are you okay and he's like not really Goodbye, my lover. Goodbye, my friend. Again, I do think that Amos genuinely did care about her, and this fucked him up because she not only did he have to kill her, she betrayed him. And yet he still had that feeling that she was there for him in a time of his need and was able to talk him through a really difficult time and tried to look out for him the best she could so it was more like he knows she wasn't a completely good person she was just following the wrong bad person and um yeah it sucks that he had to kill her so yeah he's not okay but this is probably going to lead to some stuff in season five back to her feedback she says i seriously don't have much else to say right now because i'm still reeling over amos and i'm pretty sure holden got shot in the neck i think he got grazed though i don't know if it was just a graze of the bullet or it actually penetrated through his flesh but either way that shit can't be good on the bright side i think dr okay koye i think that's her name i call her everything else lv i just need to call her lv i think lv finally got her wish and she's one with the planet and proto (laughs) 
kill now. <laughs> I work tonight, but I'm really hoping I can watch this last episode before I go to work because I want to be done with this show before I start watching anything else. Until next time, love, peace, hair grease, and black girl magic. I can't wait until you see the season finale. I don't see your feedback for the season finale yet, but I think once you see the season finale, you're going to be like, um, Christina. <laughs> you're going to have so many thoughts so many thoughts and i cannot wait to hear them i cannot wait to hear from shy as well i know ladies are busy so i'm not holding it against you but man the season finale was lit uh by the way i didn't rate this episode now did i i gave this episode a 9.7 out of 10 i really enjoyed it uh it answered a lot of questions it opened a lot of questions and it was a good um it was a good uh conclusion to the whole illa storyline and then next week i'll talk about what was happening on illis because i honestly do not recall if they said it in this episode of what was um what was the correlation between the events so i'm going to go into some spoilers so if you don't want to hear you can go ahead and check me out next week you have five, four, three, two, one. Spoilers. 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 So not too many other than the fact that the Barbara Bacola whole thing did not play out like the books. I think I mentioned previously that um, the storyline in Orbit was a little bit more tension filled. It was kind of like guerrilla warfare on the ground and then guerrilla warfare up in space because the Edward Israel and the the Rossi were in a little bit of a Mexican standoff themselves in which the Rossi had more firepower but they had this bomb and the Edward Israel the RCE staff on that that um ship very much had the scientists on lockdown like Fias was not even in orbit he actually was down on the ground so everything was unilateral in the um on the edward israel in regards to the belters there was a lot of more belter hatred <laughs> um and they were much more loyal to the rce calls and then we had havelock remember havelock from season one got penetrated remember the cant him he was actually chief mercury second in command and during this entire communication or this shit storm that was happening which it took a lot lot longer more people died in the ruins than than in the show it was much more <laughs> dire of a situation and it's pretty di- dire in the show but yeah a lot more people died and things were really terrible water was definitely in the ruins people were pretty much uh sitting in it they were filled disgusting mud was coming off the walls plus they had the slugs it wasn't even they didn't even make it as disgusting as it was in the books and so um this entire time you had communication going from mercury to havelock and it became apparent in those communications with naomi listening in because she was a prisoner of the edward israel when she realized they were making a shuttle uh and it was a way to effectively keep holding and check down on the planet uh mercury was becoming unhinged he pretty much was at point suicidal he wanted rce to plant their flag regardless of anything and he he convinced his words convinced havelock that the man was out of his damn mind and uh he decided to help naomi escape because she's the only engineer out in space and i think i've said this before but it's not emphasized that naomi is a bit of a fucking genius so he is able to warn the rossi about the the shuttle bomb so it's not Fias, it's actually havelock and naomi is able to get back over to the ship and havelock actually comes with her they actually have to escape away from the rce people shooting at them to get over to the rossi 
the railgun was not a thing on the Rossi at this time and or was it I can't remember I don't believe though that they saved the barbacola in the book I believe they lost the ore I could be misremembering that though if you know please let me know So that is all I got on spoilers. I probably will have a lot more in the next episode as we get ready for season five. I can't believe we're already done. (laughs) And Dominic Tipper posted a photo online of her, Marco, and Philip. Oh, oh, I cannot wait for season five. So if you want to send feedback, you can send that to blackgirlcouch at gmail.com. My social medias will be below. You can like, share, subscribe, and follow. You can find this podcast where all good podcasts are found. Until the next time, peace, hair grease, and black girl magic.